Styling is the most fun, but also one of the most intimidating parts of food and product photography. So I want to show you two compositions that look super impressive when photographed, but are unbelievably easy to create yourself. Basically, they're the best combination ever. Hey guys, Mandy of Replica Surfaces here. In this video, I'm walking you through how to create two of my favorite compositions, the C and the diagonal. The first composition is for flat lay photography, and I'm calling it the C. Flat lay can be especially intimidating because you've got this giant canvas. It's tempting to slap down props without considering the story you're trying to tell or thinking about the flow of the viewer's eye as they see it. A great way to control where the eye moves is with the C composition. The trick here is to arrange all of your props in a crescent shape, leaving the middle area bare. The C shape draws your eyes from one prop to the next in a pleasing way. The photo feels composed, but not overly styled. Contrast the C with this photo. Same props, but no C shape. The whole thing feels a lot more haphazard. Your eye doesn't know where to start, let alone where to go after that. The C works beautifully for product photos too, not just food, and it's easy to imagine how you can use it to showcase your own line of beauty products, candles, handmade items, jewelry, and more, whatever it is you create. Here, we're using the C to feature the art of an incredible artist, and I'll link to her in the description. So let's build a C step by step. But just before we do that, let's tap that like and that subscribe button. Liking is very liked, if you will, by the YouTube algorithm, and it really helps me make more videos for you. All right, back to building the C. As we build the C, try to picture your recipes or your product line in place of the bowls. Also, start thinking about accessory props that you could use to fill in the gaps between your dishes or your products. Start by placing your largest objects in something resembling a C shape. It can either be a forward or a backward C, both work. Clustering objects slightly and keeping some uneven spacing between them is most visually appealing and will give you room for accessory props later. Add a flat object in a contrasting shape. For food, great options are rectangular objects like a cutting board, a cooling rack, or a pot holder. That'll really help break up all the circles. For products, try a flattened towel piece of colored paper, or a plank of wood. Next, step back and assess whether you can add a more visually interesting prop and swap it in. Here, we preferred the pinched look of that milk jug in place of the bowl we initially placed. Next, add contrasting props like this kitchen tool. Next, add a fabric element to fill in empty space along either the side or the top of your scene. Either a dish towel, a fabric napkin, or a scarf. They all work beautifully. Next, fill your bowls if you're styling food. Add linear props like this butter stick and the spoon in the brown sugar. When you place those linear props, place them so that they point toward the next object in the scene. That will help your viewer's eye to know where to go next. Next, add small props to fill an empty space. Sprinkle something. If you're styling food, choose an ingredient in your recipe. For product photos, you can use loose leaf tea leaves, flower petals, pearled barley, and oats. All of those look awesome. Now, step back again and look at your whole scene. Is there anything you want to remove or add? Here we loved the intense shadow that the vanilla extract was throwing, but it was being blocked by the kitchen tool. So we removed the kitchen tool. We also thought the photo could use a second dark element that matched the vanilla bottle and balanced out the whole shot. So we piled some chocolate chips centrally, and sprinkled a couple over top of the oats to pull everything together and really help draw the eye around that C shape. Finally, add props so that objects are clustered in odd numbers. Here, we added an extra egg to the dish in the top left corner. I mean, how much better does it look with three eggs rather than two? I don't know why, the eye just prefers odd numbers. If you're a food photographer, the C shape is great for showcasing anything in bowls or plates baking ingredients, smoothie bowls, salads, soups, cakes, and more. You can also create a welcoming family style scene by including your recipe on a serving dish with individual portions surrounding it on smaller plates. To suggest this kind of a table setting, consider props like herbs, recipe ingredients, utensils, napkins, candles, that kind of thing. 
Just like you saw with the art photo, the C-shaped composition is great for product photos too. Use it to showcase multiple items in your product line, swapping in your products in place of the bowls, and swapping in the tools that you actually use to make your products, things like paint brushes, knitting needles, or pliers in place of the dining utensils. The next composition is for eye-level photography and works beautifully for both food and product shots. We'll call it the diagonal for now, but definitely comment below if you have a better name for it. All of these photos were created using the diagonal. The key to the diagonal is placing your objects in a diagonal line from front to back, with a tall object in a back corner, your subject in the middle, and a shorter object in the opposite front corner. The diagonal composition looks pretty basic and even a little weird when you view it from above, but it looks full of depth in the final eye level shot as long as you shoot with a shallow depth of field. To achieve a shallow depth of field, choose a low f-stop for DSLR cameras or use portrait mode if you have a newer iPhone. I go in depth about each of these methods in my depth perfection video, so I'll link to that in the description. All right, let's build a diagonal using a beauty product. Start by placing two backdrops in an L shape. If you're using replica surfaces, replica stands make this crazy easy and you'll never have to worry about your vertical backdrop falling over and smashing your scene again. Next, place one or two tall-ish props in the back right or left corner directly in front of your vertical surface. Place your main subject near the center of your horizontal surface at least six inches in front of the vertical backdrop. That six inches will allow you to create blur in your final photo. Finally, place a short prop in the opposite front corner so that you've created a diagonal line when you look down on it. Here's the final product shot. We didn't adjust anything between those overhead shots and this final photo. For a bit more visual interest, add a towel or cooling rack under your main subject and build the same diagonal. Of course, you can place the props in any order you want as long as they create a diagonal line when you're done. If you want to start with the front prop or the middle prop, totally fine. As a side note, I like to visualize my surface like a tic-tac-toe or a battleship grid. The tall prop goes in the back corner square, the subject in the center square, and the short prop in the front corner square. Thinking of my canvas this way helps me use the whole surface and nail the diagonal every time. And that's that, my two favorite compositions. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please comment, like, and subscribe. I've got a lot more videos coming. If you wanna learn more about shadows and natural lighting, I would check out this video next. If you'd rather learn how to edit your photos, my Lightroom Basics video, this one here, that's for you.